All right, I'm a first year student at Hogwarts. Now it's time to use some of my new magic skills on my stuff. All right. Leviosa! Leviosa? Hmm. I guess it's because I haven't learned it yet. No! It's because you're stuck in imagination land. You should know that magic doesn't exist, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but that's a fact. Uh, why don't you go cry about it on your baby sheets? Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Bluey sheets. Because it's for babies. <laughs> you little baby. Just <laughs> Maybe that's what you got from. You got your stupid imagination from Bluey. Yeah, because it's for babies, you little baby. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. I just haven't learned it yet. Hey guys, what is up? This is Matthew Diaz, me once again. Welcome back to another video game review. This time is going to be on Hogwarts Legacy, one of the most anticipated and controversial games of 2023. Now, in this game, you play as a five-year student as you're in Hogwarts and you choose your class and you customize your character and you are now a wizard or a witch. And from there, you explore the school of Hogwarts and uh, the open world that surrounds it. Like, and you can go to Hogsmeade and get various spells to use up against foes that you will have to face later on in your journey. And you will meet up with characters who are relevant to the story that have their own side stories. And from there, you're trying your best to be a good five-year student. And, of course, are trying to protect the world from, of course, what there is to come. Now, when this was announced, fans were excited. But, of course... Due to the fact that throughout the years, J.K. Rowling has said some things that definitely made a lot of people mad. And now everybody hates her. And, of course, when uh, this game was announced, they assumed that she was behind it. And from there, they just assume that the game's transphobic. And they just think that, oh, this game is terrible. People who are praising it are just getting paid. Yeah, because this, this game sucks because, you know, J.K. Rowling's behind it. But... No one ever said that she was. Like, whatever happened to just picking up a game just to have fun? Because while this game is set in the world of Harry Potter, we don't really get the familiar characters that we know from, from the movies or the stories or anything like that. But we do get a cast of some really unique and interesting characters that, like I said before, have their own side plots that you can do while you're doing the main stories. It's honestly something I recommend because... There are like dozens upon dozens of quests that you can do throughout your journey that will definitely keep you occupied. And while I'm bringing the subject up about the game being very controversial, someone actually bought the $300 collector's edition just to destroy it. Does that mean that they have won? Absolutely not. Nah, the, <laughs> the guy that just spent money just... <laughs> They have the money now, and you pretty much got nothing. So it just goes to show that people that are just criticizing the game before even playing it have just gone, they've just gone way too overboard, and they just can't accept the fact that they pretty much lost this entire thing because it's getting rave reviews from critics and audiences alike. And it sold over 12 million copies and became one of the uh, biggest uh, releases for a single-player game and uh, one of the most viewed, too. So... Needless to say, people are enjoying it. I enjoy it as well. Easily the best thing I can say about this game is that it's a Harry Potter RPG that I feel like most fans could be happy with if they just got up and played it because it's a very unique RPG experience. What is really unique about this game is how the combat is far more different than your typical RPG. 
you've used your wand throughout, and I was wondering how exactly that was going to work. And the combat is actually a lot of fun. You just shoot your uh, wand at enemies, and there are spells you can get throughout your journey. And that's the biggest thing about this game, is your spells. You're going to need them if you're going to do specific puzzles, or if you're going to get through specific obstacles, or get certain collectibles, because there is a lot to collect. And after you're done with the main story, I feel like it's just, <laughs> you're just going to want to get everything that uh, the game has. Because there are challenges that you can do that uh, keeps track of your progress on uh, specific challenges that you do, like during your quests and stuff like that. It was honestly really nice to see. And with the unique spells that you get, including some very familiar ones that we've seen in the world of Harry Potter before, there are some ones that I feel like just felt very useful Though there are some that definitely are there because you might need them for specific puzzles. They're not really going to use them as often. It was still really fun to use all these spells. And in terms of its combat style, I just kind of wish that you got more than just one wand. Because you never really change your weapon throughout. Kind of like one criticism I had with Hi-Fi Rush. But at the same time, you do get uh, perks and stuff that you can uh, boost up to boost your spells up. And uh, you can get new spells along the way. It's something that I just really enjoy doing and spend my time with. They're called talents, pretty much. And uh, you can get gear throughout your journey. It's pretty much like getting loot and, uh, like, gear in Destiny. Like, you can get, uh, like, I wouldn't really say armor, just clothing to, like, boost up your stats a little bit. And they change your design, too. They change your look, which is something that Marvel's Avengers... Sort of had, just minus the design part, as you just look the same, but they definitely did it right here. Because it's it's really nice to see you, your appearance change a lot throughout. And you can play between a boy or a girl, and you can just switch out, like, you can even switch out your designs too. Which is something that I never really did, because I was always happy with my design, with my look. And uh, throughout the journey, it took me, like, a little less than 30 hours to complete, like, almost everything. But this is a game I really just wanted to take my time with and just didn't want to rush through everything because I didn't want to miss out on, uh, well, you're not going to miss out either way on uh, much in terms of the side quests. Just, you see the quest, you just do it. Of course, there are those typical quests that are just like fetch quests and there are some that don't exactly tell you where you need to go. And there are assignments that you can do. That will give you those other spells without having to progress through the main story. That can help out a lot. There's also this one quest that you can do where you can like level up your lockpicking skills. Which can be helpful along the way too. I just wanted to do everything that there was to do before being the main story. That's why it took me quite a while. Though even after like being finished in less than 30 hours, I still feel like there should have been a lot more. I don't know. I haven't done everything that the game had to offer. But I feel like... Like, there's an indication of how many quests are left. It's just, I feel like there really should have been a lot more since uh, this is supposed to be, like, a really big game. And it honestly felt a little bit shorter than that. But that's not to say that the game's bad. I mean, I really enjoyed the content that it had to show. Like, uh, it paid a lot of homage to uh, the movies and specific characters. Like, there are some really interesting ones, like some companions that you can get along the way. Uh, that uh, can be there like uh, throughout specific uh, parts of the of the quests that you do, like side quests for specific characters. It's something that I really had fun doing. That's the biggest thing here, the exploration. It's all outstanding. It is something that I had fun doing. You can also go around in your broom. You can like go around in, in your like broom and stuff. You can get upgrades for your broom during specific quests along the way. It was something that was really unique and it controls rather well. Now, in terms of its story, it's not, well, it's not that memorable in my opinion, but it's still a decent story. But really, the gameplay is what really saved the entire thing for me, because the gameplay is where I spent most of my time with and the side missions. Because the storyline, I kind of often kind of forgot that there was supposed to be like a main storyline, because with all the specific quests that you have to do, it kind of makes the story a little bit too scattered out, but... Like, it's definitely not something, like, big to write home about. It's nothing like Mass Effect or anything like that. But it still has a decent story that definitely isn't nearly as good as the stories that the movies had to tell. But uh, it's still a storyline that RPGs like this need a story. So let's just say at least it has a story.
But really, I feel like the story best, mostly works through its characters. Like, there's one involving, uh, like, uh, troubles with this, with uh, one guy and his sister and uh, other characters and other students. And it's honestly something that I was really engaged by with some really satisfying combat and uh, some really unique spells that you get along the way. Now, of course, one of the biggest things that this game is getting criticized for is its performance. It does have performance issues, but I played the game on Series X, and it looked really nice for me. I mean, the world is outstanding to look at, though. It does have those occasional texture pop-ins and uh, some uh, textures that really shouldn't be there and some, like, flickering textures. But uh, it can't be forgiven because the game, it doesn't, like, break or crash or anything like that. Though, every time I try getting back in for quick resume, it uh, automatically just uh, crashes immediately and I have to restart it, though. It doesn't take that long for me to get back into the game, but it's honestly something that I just uh, feel like could have been... Like, compare this to, like, God of War, where that game was, like, almost flawless when it came to performance. But, hey, it's something that can be fixed, and it's... With uh, with stuff like that, it often does get fixed later down the line. So, yeah, I mean, but still, for 70 bucks, I still feel like it still might be a little too much. But, uh, I mean, just like Dead Space, Dead Space is a great game, but didn't really need to be 70 bucks in my opinion. But, but uh, just wait for a price drop if you're still not sure. Maybe it'll be on uh, Game Pass later down the line. But either way, this is a game that I still recommend. It might not be the like, all-time greatest RPG or greatest licensed game of all time, but it's one that I felt very satisfied with. It has really fun gameplay. It has side missions that I enjoyed doing. It's something that I was just really glued to uh, with the time that I had with this game. Like, I really wanted to spend as much time with this game as possible, but, of course, I didn't do, like, a lot of that because it's been nearly three weeks since the game came out and I was just so busy with other things, but... It's a great Harry Potter single-player RPG experience that I had a lot of fun with. It really doesn't deserve the controversies that that has surrounded it because the game's fun. It's not like a game that's just inadvertently offending anybody because it's not like a, an overly offensive game. Just it's not transphobic. the The people that just make it out to be that way just <laughs> they just because J.K. Rowling and all that just let's just let's just forget the person and just enjoy the game because that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been enjoying my time with the game and yeah, it's an experience that I definitely had a lot of fun with. So it's by far in terms of Harry Potter games, this is definitely the best by far though. I haven't played other Harry Potter games before, but I'm sure none of them will be as good as this because it's a great game and nonetheless, it might have issues, but it's honestly something I kind of expected, but I still thought it was a great time for me. Though there haven't been any announcements for DLC. In fact, I don't really think they're going to be doing any DLC because they didn't have DLC in mind. That honestly would have made the game even better if it did. But who knows? The game is still relatively new, so maybe they, they might change their minds. But I really hope so because I do want to go back to this world. Hopefully we can get a sequel that can maybe expand upon it. Who knows? But nonetheless, I had a lot of fun with this one, and I do recommend it. Call me transphobic all you, all you want, but I'm not. It's just a game. A game that I had fun with. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Word out.